Hey yo, what's up, what's up, what's up? This is Games for Days, and this genius billionaire playboy philanthropist is Iron Man, my ultimate power armor entrepreneur. He's always in his power armor, staring you down with his glowing purple eyes, or eyeing you from across the bar through his glasses, while telling the bartender to get you another drink on him. He uses his assortment of lasers to blast down all that oppose him, and he never falters, having a suit for every situation, and a bot by his side doing everything he can't. He can use explosives if you want, but remember he can blast his fusion cores like grenades at enemies, so be wary of that. Don't forget the timestamp links in the description in case you want to skip a section or come back to review information you forgot. And don't forget to follow my Insta where I show off all the builds before they're uploaded, so if you want a sneak peek, go check it out. Don't forget the gang's channels along with Mar McQueen, but now our Killing Crusaders backstory. Growing up in Manhattan, Tony, as Iron Man was known before the war, spent his time expanding his knowledge. From a young age, he could tweak the, his wealthy family's Mr. Handy and make many great improvements to how he functioned and behave. He learned as much as he could throughout his childhood, and he was a genius. At the age of 14, he met a girl at school named Nora, and he found her remarkable. She was the reason he honed his skills of persuasion and charm, and he talked to her all throughout the school year, and she fell for him in no time flat. But at the age of 15, the principal called Tony into his office, and a man in a suit was sitting there. The principal told, told Tony of an opportunity to learn with the best and brightest at CIT, and after some time talking to Nora and his parents, he accepted the offer. Nora promised to wait on it. Tony went to CIT and learned a multitude of things. Robotics, chemistry, business, and firearms. When he was 17, he was contacted by the military and told he would be paid handsomely to come and help the scientists in Alaska make innovations in the power armor. He agreed after finding out he wouldn't be in harm's way and was conscripted. He went to China and went through physical training, and after that he helped out for six months making many strides in the power armor designs and fusion core usage. But one day he came in and sat down at his desk and heard a boom down the hallway. He became alert and went to investigate. He passed through the door to the main office and tripped a tripwire. Before he could react, he felt the searing pain of shrapnel in his body and felt the feeling of two people dragging him away. It wasn't long before he passed out. He woke up in a dimly lit room and he saw a camera in the top left corner of the room and heard a voice. So, Mr. Uh, Stark, we hear you're good with power armor, no? Good. You'll see a table before you. You will construct three suits of armor, and when this is done, you will be rewarded. He looked forward and saw the table, and he knew everything that was there, and what they did. So he got to work. He got fed twice a day, and two months passed, and he was almost done with the last suit. Just two more components. The door was slammed open, and people came in with guns. After talking to them, explaining that only two were done, they took them, but not before leaving a bruise on his eye. And they left the third for him to finish. He plugged in the last two components and got in. He looked at the button in his hand and gave a sigh. He went to the door, and he pushed the button. Boom! Boom! He kicked the door down and saw what was left of the two suits of power armor, and he grabbed a laser rifle off the ground and used it, used his far superior suit of armor to fight his way out of the compound. He went back to base, and was relieved from service after he was celebrated, of course. He left and got home and found Nora. He regaled the tale of his imprisonment, and they got married, had Sean, and settled down in Sanctuary Hills. Then in October 2077, the bombs fall. Leaving the vaults and seeing the world before him, he and his instincts will kick in. Just like at his prison workshop, he needs to find protection in order, in order to survive, and the wasteland is ripe for the picking. He'll find all the power armor he can and try to make it to where he has his best suit for every situation. Knowing all of that, the stats at the beginning of the game will be 4 Strength, 1 Perception, 3 Endurance, 7 Charisma, 8 Intelligence, 4 Agility, and 1 Luck. Put the special book into Intelligence, and if you need guides on where to find any of the bobbleheads or the special book, there's a playlist in the description. Strength is taken here because he never lifted weights until he was in the military, and after that he just kept lifting because he liked the way he looked. Perception isn't one because the trip bomb knocked something loose up there. Endurance is here because he never had to deal with much other than that trip bomb. 
Charisma is here because he had to make it better for Nora to fall for him, and it stuck. Intelligence is here because he's a freaking genius. Agility is here because I said so, and luck is on dump stat because he was never lucky. The perks this build will take are armor, heavy gunner, three ranks of rifleman, chem resistant, cap collector, lady killer, party boy, medic, gun nut, hacker, science, nuclear physicist, four ranks of commando, and finally action boy. Armorer is taken so we have access to the best armor mods out there. Heavy gunner is taken so heavy guns now do double damage. Our three ranks of riflemen are taken so non-auto rifles now do 60% more damage and ignore 20% of a target's armor. Chem resistant is taken so you gain complete immunity to chem addictions. Cap collector is taken so buying and selling prices are much better and you gain the ability to invest 500 caps into a business to raise their buying and selling capacity. Lady killer is taken so women now suffer plus 15% damage in combat and are much easier to persuade in dialogue. Party boy is taken so you have no chance to get addicted to alcohol. The effects are doubled and you gain plus 3 luck while drinking. Medic is taken so stim packs now restore all health and rat away takes all rads away. Gun nut is taken so we gain access to all gun mods. Hacker is taken so we can hack all terminals and never get locked out. Science is taken so we gain access to all high tech mods. Nuclear physicist is taken so fusion cores can be ejected from power armor like grenades and fusion cores last twice as long. Four ranks of commando is taken so auto weapons now do 80% more damage and gain a chance to stagger. And finally action boy is taken so action points regen 75% faster. The gear Iron Man will use is a focused overcharged Gatlin laser, glow sighted advanced deliver pistol without the suppressor, any laser rifle you choose as long as it's automatic, recon shielded gauze rifle, recon six crank laser musket, a salvage the Sultron head, sharpshooters converted alien blaster, tactical excited institute rifle, and the troubleshooters maximum laser sniper rifle. For under his power armor he'll wear the hard work t-shirt from the creation club and if you don't have that any old t-shirt and jeans will do and he will have as many power armor suits as you can get your hands on and if you have the automatron dlc he will also have as many robots as you can craft doing a multitude of different things don't have all assaultrons or all the brain what's the brain ones the brain ones don't have all the brain ones or all Sentry bots or per or Mr. Handy's or Protectrons have a mix of all. Leaving the vault, Iron Man will see all the factions of the Commonwealth and notice the Brotherhood is particularly invested in power armor. He'll use them to get to the Institute, and then he'll be rid of them and take all their armor for himself. He'll then stick with the Institute and work as their officer throughout the rest of his life. He'll spare the Mechanist. He'll create peace at Far Harbor and he'll get rid of all the raider factions at Nuka World, keeping the overboss power armor all for himself. Well, that's been the build. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to smash a like. It's always appreciated. And subscribe so I can feed my magic dragon, Pete. Follow my Insta if you like Fallout build sneak peeks, vintage games, or female super mutants in bikinis. And check out Marvel Queen's channel unless you want Iron Man to touch down in your yard and send a repulsor beam through the house. Check out the rest of the builds in the description, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.